Welcome to Master the Game. I am Juice. Today we are going to be talking about Dungeons and Dragons 5e Monsters. And the specific monster today is Zombies. So let's get started. Make sure you head on over to RPGjuice.com where you can get caught up on the latest videos, the latest news, and blog posts from Juice himself. So I have my trusty monster manual here, and you will see on page 315 and 316 uh, the coverage of zombies. Now, if you're interested in the lore, feel free to read up on that on 315. Um, me being someone who grew up watching horror movies like... Uh, Night of the Living Dead and things like that. I've always enjoyed zombies. Uh, the What is his name? Romero movies, uh, Dawn of the Dead, excellent zombie movies. You had Resident Evil, things like that. And uh, the culture around zombies has been great. Uh, I remember when Walking Dead came out, and I was a fan from the start. I had heard of the comic books. Uh, in fact, I have the graphic novel for the first, I don't remember how many seasons of it, but I have the graphic novel for it. Um, anyways, I love zombies. One of the first monsters I used in 5th edition was zombies. Uh, in fact, you can see that one shot on my channel. I ran it back in 2014, and I will post a link to that below, and I'm sure you'll be able to see a little graphic of a card or something on here as well if you want to click that and watch that. So with that, let's get into the meat of why I like 5e zombies. So I like to play games that are very epic. I like my players to feel like heroes. I like them to be able to do awesome stuff. But I also like to do cool things with my monsters. Now, zombies have a really cool ability, very cool ability, called Undead Fortitude. And what that is, is if damage reduces the zombie to zero hit points, it must make a con saving throw with a DC of five plus the damage taken unless the damage is radiant or from a critical hit. On a success, the zombie drops to one hit point instead. Now, I've made the DC a little higher before. I've actually made it so it was just the damage dealt. Uh, it just kind of depends on my groups. Um, one of the things I also like to do with my zombies is give them armor and up their armor class. I like to give them extra hit points. Um, you know, a lot of things I like to do with Undead Fortitude. Um, which you make Undead Fortitude, you know, matter a little bit more. Uh, if you do it as is, I think throwing waves of zombies at players, even at low levels, is not that bad to deal with. Now, zombies are only a quarter CR. Uh, they are really easy to hit. They have an AC of 8. Hit points are, on average, 22. They can only move 20 feet. Now, 20 feet does seem like a lot for a zombie, um, they, they basically walk really fast. Um, they have no wisdom saving throws, um, or I'm sorry, I take that back. They have a wisdom saving throw proficiency, but that's just zero. Uh, everything's negative for them pretty much, um, except for constitution. Uh, they're immune to poison. They're conditioned immune to poison. They have dark vision 60 feet. Uh, I like to play with giving them true sight. Uh, I think that's what it is, true sight. Uh, basically, they don't need to see. I kind of treat it like they can smell, even though they don't need to breathe. Um, very low passive perception. Uh, they can't speak, but they do understand languages that they knew in life. Their attacks are very weak. Uh, so it's called a slam, so like they slam into you. Uh, I like to give them a bite attack and a claw attack as well. Um, they can only do one per turn. The slam is plus three to hit. It's a 1d6 plus one bludgeoning damage. So uh, I like to give them a claw that also does 1d6, a bite that is 1d6, but also um, has a, a, I like to add on like a poison, um, extra poison per round. If you die from that poison, or drop to zero hit points from that poison, there is a chance you could turn into a zombie. These are That's homebrew stuff that I like to add on to it. But I think it makes it more fun 
Um, and it kind of recreates that whole zombie movie feel where, oh, they were bit. They may be contaminated with the Z virus kind of thing. Now, in the monster manual, they also have an ogre zombie and a beholder zombie. The ogre zombie has the same armor class of 8, has a lot more hit points, has 85 hit points, can move almost as fast as your heroes at 30 feet. Um, once again, their stats aren't very good, except for strength and constitution, uh, immune to poison again, um, challenge 2, which means they're tougher, they still have the undead fortitude, and they have a morning star as a weapon. Again, get rid of the morning star, give them a claw and bite attack, I think that's a little bit better, personally. Uh, plus 6 to hit, 2d8 plus 4 bludgeoning damage is what it is with the morning star. So why not just give them a bite attack and two claw attacks? Now they have three attacks. You know, I think that would work a little better with the zombie theme. Um, that's how I would do it. Uh, and that's what I, I kind of like to do. Beholder zombies, uh, you're using that, you're just nasty. <laughs> no, it's... You know, you still have the eye rays. Again, the same concept of lower stats. Um, they're only a challenge five, so it's it's possible you can beat it. A beholder zombie would be easier to beat than a beholder. Uh, but the thing that's kind of cool about that is you can scare your players and make them think they're about to face a beholder and then unveil that it's, you know, one stalk is crooked and missing an eye. Like, you can have some cool stuff there. Where would you use zombies? Uh, you can use them to protect a necromancer or a, a dark wizard. Uh, you can use them to protect a um, treasure hoard. Uh, maybe it's in an old temple underground, and the only way down it is to descend by rope down there. And that's why there's zombies down there, but not above. Um, you know, a lot of cool things you can do with zombies. Um, I, I like the idea of using them to protect hordes or old temples. I like the idea of having necromancers in games. I've used them multiple times. Um, hags, you know, I don't know if hags can actually do that, if there's something in there that kind of implies that, but there's something about the fact that most hags are around a swamp, the idea of fog and zombies muddling around there. Um, just, I like that idea personally, so I do it. I think it's fun. Uh, Beholder zombie, I don't know when I would use that, or an ogre zombie. Uh, I guess you could still use it with the Necromancer idea. Maybe a Lich. A Lich might have a Beholder Zombie. That would be kind of cool. Um, kind of like a mindless, you know, Beholder Zombie that it, it resurrected. Um, but yeah, there, there's a lot of things you can do with zombies. And again, it's one of my favorite monsters to use in 5th edition. You know, lower level parties should be able to handle your normal zombies. Um... After a level or two, an ogre zombie shouldn't be too bad. That undead fortitude can really mess you up. Um, if you have a cleric in the party who's doing like guiding bolts or something, it's not a problem. If you have a orc who, or a champion fighter who's got an improved critical, uh, that helps too. But yeah, there's just some really cool things you can do. So I would love to hear how you use zombies. Uh, so please leave a comment below if you've had a lot of fun or great stories with the undead fortitude ability. Again, I'd love to hear about it. Um, so again, leave your comment below and smash that subscribe button, hammer that like button, and I will see you next time. This was Master of the Game. I am Juice. Game on.